part of the Press Play Podcast Network. And welcome to another Reg Eye and Rota podcast powered by MGM Northfield Park right here on the Press Play Podcast Network. Shout out to our fantabulous producer, Ty Quartz, who makes sure this gets out to you in the podcastosphere. We don't care how you listen. We don't care if you uh, Siri, if it's Alexa, your phone, wherever you find podcasts. Thanks to Ty Quartz, it's there for you to listen to. And Michael Regai, don't look now, but the Cleveland Browns are off to their best start since 1994, all alone in second place in the AFC North at 7-3, and three, thanks to that thrilling exhilarating 13 to 10 victory at home <laughs> against the Pittsburgh Steelers on Sunday. What a game that was, Reg. Yeah, well, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it set the NFL back a little bit. Offensively, it was uh, extremely challenged. So if Oof. you want to uh, uh, go to the other side and say both defenses are terrific and uh, absolutely uh, had their two offensive opponents in lockdown, okay, that's fine. But uh, offensively, they're both very challenged football teams. And, um, you know, Kenny, I, look, I, uh, I'm i sure a lot of Browns fans, you know, aren't going to like this, but, I, you know, the Browns aren't going to do anything of significance with Dorian Thompson-Robinson as their quarterback. Amen. I'm sorry, man. They're not. Uh, you can tell me all you want. I know he's a kid. I got it. I understand that. And I know he's a rook, but look, man, this is the NFL. So when you get a chance to go play, like I said, um, I mean, today, uh, do they not want to? Uh, is it is it him or Kenny? You tell me. Is it uh, the uh, Kevin Stefanski and Alex Van Pelt and the offensive coaches who just don't want to throw the football at all with any depth to it? meaning to throw the football against defenses uh, down the field because they, they they I was getting pretty damn upset today about that. I mean you it, it, you you got to, again, it's the NFL. You got to have and if you don't believe in that quarterback that he can do it, now right. you got to hold because then then you can't have him on the football field. So which is it with Dorian Thompson Robinson in your mind with the Browns coaching staff? Well, they they as I was watching the game today, I just kept thinking this. They drilled it into his head. Look, don't turn the ball over. We're not going to put you in a position where there's a chance for you to turn it over. And if there's any doubt, throw it away. The drive ending in a kick is a good thing, meaning if it's an extra point, field goal, or a punt. Any of those three is a good thing on offense today with our defense. We think we can shut them down, and they did, right? So just don't turn it over. Now, he still turned it over once, right? He threw an interception. But, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I'm with you, so I was nodding my head when you were saying, that, you know, that hey, good for him, and it was better than his friend. Hey, he only turned it over once versus three times, right, against Baltimore. Yeah. So, um, and they did score one touchdown where they didn't have a touchdown the previous game, but that that's not making great strides. Thank goodness the Steelers offense was more pathetic than the Browns offense or the Browns don't win that game. And thank goodness for one of the best moves. And recently he hasn't made many Andrew Barry made in picking up, uh, you know, Dustin Hopkins because they'd have three more losses if it wasn't mm -hmm. for Dustin Hopkins this year. True. So yeah, it wasn't pretty. It was downright ugly. But they found a way to win. They're seven and three, and surprisingly, a half game out of first place uh, in the AFC North. But I'm with you. You can't move forward for the rest of this season expecting to get to the playoffs and win in the playoffs with Dorian Thompson Robinson or PJ Walker as your quarterback. So what do you do? Is it Flacco? Is it somebody else? I'm not a huge Flacco guy. I, I think he's done. I think he's the Statue of Liberty, 3-14 and 14 in his last 17 starts. But I don't know. You tell me. Are you you okay with Flacco instead of uh, either one of those guys? That's a tough question to answer <laughs> because that <laughs> uh, what you just what you just laid out, yeah, that record in his last – and one of those three, by the way, remembers against the Browns. That's right. 
wasn't that opening day? Uh, uh, first game week. of the year. I okay, think it was second week game two. Of the, yeah, second well, game of the year. He, last year. he he brought them from behind in the the Jets, the New York Jets. Yeah, in the fourth quarter to win. So I know I'm. Uh, like I said, Kenny, I, um, I, I, I'm not trying to kill the kid. I'm not. And I understand he's a rookie, but again, you, it, NFL seasons are, uh, they come and go real quick and you're seven and three. You want there, there's no chance, no chance that the Browns, I don't care how well they play defensively. There's no chance that you're going to win two, three playoff games, win the AFC, and maybe get to the uh, the Super Bowl with Dorian Thompson Robinson as your quarterback. I'm sorry, I I I, I just don't see it. Uh, again, I, I give him. Uh, I will say this for the kid, Kenny. When the, he hit three throws, you know, I get as I said uh, to me, just so many. So many check downs and so yeah. many quick throws and and David Joku dropping the ball three times today. Oh, don't don't even get me started. That cost me fifty dollars because I had oh, a, a David and Joku touchdown today for fifty bucks. Had he ah. held on to that damn thing and yeah. he dropped that one and about two or three others. At least three. It might have been four, but uh, you know he had a poor one today. But but here's the point. Look, I, I give the Browns, uh, you know, uh, uh, I mean, but. Robinson threw the ball 43 times today. Yeah. And and 90% of them quick outs, hitches, screens. So again, you, are you afraid to let him throw Kevin Stefanski or is it just you know he really can't and he's not ready for this? I'm leaning toward uh, the latter. I think they don't think he really can. He's ready for this, but uh, they don't want to play P.J. Walker right now either. So – I mean, there you have it. And all that said, and they get a win today yeah. and, um, you know, continue to move themselves toward, uh, uh, and, unless they, Kenny, unless, I mean, unless they completely start crap in the bed, I mean, uh, <laughs> they should be a playoff team. Right. Hell, the, the way it's going now, they, uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't know if they're going to overtake Baltimore. Uh, and win the division, but they definitely should be a playoff. They're seven and three. Yep. I mean, you know, <laughs> we've been saying that uh, you know, ten and seven, certainly eleven and six will get you in. So schedule game time, Reg. You ready? They're, they're, I'm sorry. Uh, s- schedule game time. You ready? Oh, seven and three game, yeah. right now. Here we go. Oh, yeah, seven yeah, and for three. Sure. Yeah. Uh, at Denver, at L.A. Rams, they go one and one in those two games. All right? Yeah, so I agree. Eight, I'll give you there. Yep, I, I agree with you. Okay, then you've yep. got uh, Jacksonville and Chicago uh, at home. Okay, hey, I at least one win, maybe two there. Right? Yeah, I, so, for sure, it might be. But I'm going to stay conservative and say one and one right. there as well. Yeah, eight and four, so that makes them nine and five. Then you're at Houston. Hey, they're a playoff team now. They C.J. Are. Stroud didn't play great today, but. Rookie of the year, uh, leader by far. That'll be uh, an interesting battle there. Jets yeah. are awful. That's that's their 10th win, right? Yes. And you think one out of two against Cincinnati and Houston. So 11 wins. Yeah, 11 and, and 11 6. And, 11 and 6. At least, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. And yes. we don't even know who the quarterback is. And we're we saying they're no going to be idea. 11 and 6. We have no idea who the quarterback is. And again, look, they're going to best thing for them right now. It, uh, you know, it's a little tough on uh, uh, the hearts of many Browns fans, but best thing for them right now is to play these low scoring games and, uh, you know, look for the defense to uh, make enough plays, come away with a football uh, or get stops, all of the above and uh, win low scoring games. I mean, that's the way I see it, because if you think Dorian Thompson Robinson is going to put up 35 against yeah. any of these, uh, <laughs> no, no, you you are you're mistaken. You're far mistaken. Do you believe that they played him today with the idea that we can't play Flacco this week? Let's get through today. Hopefully, find a way to win. Yeah. Get Flacco up to speed and head to Denver next week with Joe Flacco as their starting quarterback. Possibility. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's a possibility. Wow. I, you know, again, uh, like I said, I, uh, 
During his during his prime and his heyday, I mean, Joe Flacco, what, what is he now? Is he 39 years old? He'll be 39 in January. Right All now. right. So he's almost 39 years old. But, you know, I mean, we know quarterbacks. I mean, if you can uh, – if you can throw the football and uh, do it efficiently, you can you can play to your forty or forty plus in the NFL. Uh, I, Kenny, I, I I just don't know. Recently, you said it all. I haven't. Flacco has just not been starting quarterbacking caliber playoff winning guy in the last. He was at one time, as we know. Now, a lot of people would say, well, you, you know, maybe he played with. Uh, Quarterback to one of the best defenses, uh, you know, the NFL's ever seen. Oh, well, sure, that helps. Right. But, um, yeah, I, I just uh, – he hasn't done enough to give you a lot of confidence, no. How about if you say it that way? I I, I don't have a lot of confidence in him right now, How? but I will say he might be just from an experience, you know, if you put in the, the experience level. Yeah. He might be the best of the possibilities for the Browns. And, right and that's not saying much, right? I mean, no. it's Nick Foles, it's Colt McCoy, and and a few others. Uh, Matt Ryan, if you can convince him to come out of the broadcast. Yeah, I watched, Tom yeah, Brady, he, was, yeah he was in the booth today. He was in the booth doing yeah. the Rams and yeah. uh, Seattle today, Matt yeah. Ryan. Yeah. What about Tom Brady? How, is that too far-fetched? <laughs> there, I'm, being, I'm being serious asking this question. Yeah. Here's what that defense is as good as there is. Jim Schwartz should be named assistant coach of the year right now in the NFL, right? That, that defense good job. Yep. is as good as there is. Okay. If I'm Brady and I look at that and I go, okay, that, that's a hell of a defense. Um, this mm. year it's up for grabs, right? The, the Super Bowl. You right. know, okay, if Blacko or Brady, if I'm having my choice of those two, I'm taking Brady 10 times out of 10. Uh, if he wants to come out of retirement. I don't know, though, if he's even, you know, considering that or looks at the Browns maybe that way and says that that would be maybe one of the few teams I would think about coming out of retirement. Well, sure. And that's the biggest factor, as you said. Where where Where's his mindset with right. that? I mean, does he have an urge to play again? I will say this of the guys we were just talking about, though, Kenny. <laughs> Dorian Thompson Robinson, PJ Walker, uh, who else? You brought up Colt McCoy. Right. Uh, of course, uh, Joe Flacco. Give me Brady. Absolutely. I'll take my chances with Brady. No questions about that. Without man. even a second thought. I don't care if he, I don't care if he's 66 years old. What is right. he? 45? It doesn't matter. You know, if 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 he's into it and he wants to do it, I take him uh, without even giving it a second thought ahead of all those other guys. Greatest quarterback to play the game. Deciphers yeah, defenses sure. better than anybody. Makes plays when the game's on the line. Uh, you know, we who uh, the chicken or the egg? Which came first, Belichick or Brady? Who was key to the Super Bowls? Well, guess what? Belichick ain't done doodly squat without Tom Brady. Brady nope. goes to Tampa Bay and leads them to a Super Bowl. So there's my answer. It's Tom Brady. As much as that pains me to say, he's the best to ever play that position and arguably the greatest football player to ever play. Yeah, he's uh, he's certainly special. How about that? He's you know, one of the most special quarterbacks that the NFL has ever ever seen. And uh, yeah, so listen, you brought him up, and uh, if that if that became an option for the Browns, I think they'd be silly not to go down that road. How do you not call him if you're Andrew Barry? Just for shits and giggles, Reg. I mean, yes. seriously, just pick up the phone and say, "Hey, Tom, I know." far fetched but hey look at us we're 7 and 3 without a quarterback this year right um uh, you, you you didn't have to go through two a days what do you how much money do you want come in and play these final uh, seven regular season games and then four more playoff games and mm -hmm. let's win another super bowl why not sure i mean you know and got to make that call i agree you do have to make that call as we said uh you know over what uh, is in the offing right now yeah so um, seven and three football team. Um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of atta boys and a lot of kudos for that. You got yourself in a great position. Yes, Cleveland Browns got yourself in a great position. Now, can you go finalize it? Yeah. And to me, Kenny, I I don't know how you feel. Um, I don't think that uh, I didn't think they were going to win the Super Bowl coming into the year. Um, I, I certainly you'd put them if you're throwing out 
six, eight teams, you'd put them in there. Yes. Right. But I, uh, I, I don't see that happening. Uh, going into that again, you know, you got to get a damn quarterback, got to get a quarterback better than what you put on the football field today for that to even have any chance of happening. Yeah. If I'm tiering my, my Super Bowl teams, I got three teams in tier one. And that's KC, Philly, and San Fran. Those are my tier one teams, right? Sounds best, right. Yeah, that sounds right. To win, right? Yep. Then yep. if you're going tier two, Dallas is starting to play well, even mm-hmm. though Dak scares the crap out of me. Um, Baltimore is really good, but uh, uh, Lamar, you and I have had that discussion. Yep. Uh, Lamar Jackson in the postseason, eh? You know, so but they're they're in that tier two down in in Buffalo. They won convincingly today. And there's still something about them that don't trust Josh Allen, but well, I get you. I, but I, he's I, right yeah, there I, with Lamar Jackson, then, right? There you, you don't go. trust them, but there, there you, you go. You look at that team and you go, okay, that that's that the tier two mm-hmm. team. And then I would think maybe depending on who the Browns' quarterback is, the rest of the way you start, you know, putting them in the conversation with the Detroit Lions. Well, I was going to ask you about what your thoughts are on uh, my Motor City Lions. Um, they yeah, helped me win a parlay today, Red. So I'm happy they were well, able to score well, 16 points in the last five minutes How and come about from behind that? and get that yeah, win. Yeah, <laughs> they because they were stinking the joint up. Ooh, uh, boy, Jared Goff was uh, reverting back to some of them early Rams days of his when he was what, he just throw big, three picks today. He was just telling him, here, take the football." <laughs> you know, that's what. Yeah. yeah, and he hasn't been doing that. He's right. been he's, he's been, been very really, good. Uh, you know, uh, staying away from turnovers and 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 playing very good at the quarterback position, but not today. And they yeah. wound, they found a way to get a win. Uh, you know, again, albeit we say this all the time, Chicago Bears have a, what are they a three and eight something like that. Right, so right. they're not a very good football team. But Kenny, as we know, it's a damn NFL, and man, you you can't lose to them teams like that, especially right. when you're at home. Right. And they are right there for about fifty seven minutes. They were on the verge of losing. Yeah, and yeah. found a pro- and probably the Bears helped a little bit too, um, you know. But uh, yeah, so I agree with all those uh, with all. But but certainly, uh, you know, Philly and uh, and San Fran. Yeah, and KC and Monday and night. KC, that's the game. Yeah, that's though, the they're, they're, night game. They're, they're, I'd be. I'll say it today on November 19th. I'll be very surprised. My son Cal's birthday, by the way. Yes. Yes. 21. I know Red, you were, you went through. Yeah. Where'd I know. That go? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. I know you went through that with your wonderful son. I remember yeah. those days us talking about that. So yeah, it's like crazy. Um, but yeah, I, 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 uh, <laughs> I'd like to think that um, you know that this Browns football team uh, can can find a way to to go deep in the playoffs, Kenny. But man, I, I I've got my doubts. Well, here's the here's the crazy thing. All right, Burrow done for the year. Deshaun yeah. Watson done for the year. Kenny Pickett sucks. Okay, so I mean. There's one quarterback in the AFC North right now. It's Lamar Jackson, and that's and. You know, he's put up MVP like numbers, but as you and I have said in the playoffs, we don't trust him. So you know, here's your opportunity. You just beat Pittsburgh and Baltimore in back to back weeks, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to beat Cincinnati in the last week without Joe Burrow. Uh, you beat him with Joe Burrow. So for me, that that's a that's a winnable game now for sure. Cincinnati's going to be out of the playoff picture. Uh, they're going to be making their tea times in the Bahamas and the uh, Puerto Vallarta, making their vacation plans. So they're, they're not going to want that game. So that that's why finding this veteran quarterback gives you a chance to stay in the division race as well as win a playoff game uh, and maybe, you know, even two, depending on sure, who that quarterback sure. is because of uh, the injuries within the division and everything. No, it's right there for you. And then let's let, you know, first things first. Yeah. I think at this point, at uh, you know, at seven, any anything less than eleven and six is going to be a disappointment. The way yes. I see it, well, you just went through the schedule. Yeah, there's some tough football games in there, but again, I mean, you know, it, eleven and it, you got to be at least eleven and six. Now that's probably not going to win you the division. I would think, uh, you know, even with their uh, at times inconsistencies and uh, you know the Browns win over them, Baltimore. I'm talking about right. 
I still think they'll do enough to be able to uh, to stay atop the division. But, hey, look, <laughs> the Browns are going to have their opportunities to, uh, as we said, you know, I, 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 to me, they got they got to win two games, Kenny. They got to get deep in the playoffs. So if you win two, does that get you to the AFC championship game? Well, yeah, it would, wouldn't it? Well, it depends if you win the division, right? Right. If, if you're a wild card, you got to get three wins to get to the AFC championship game. That's right. Yeah, you're right. Game. Yeah. So two if you win the division, yeah. three is to get to the AFC championship game if you're playing in that wild card round. So, yeah. but. Um, you know, it's, uh, we're going to find out, we're going to find out what they're all about, but, uh, Hey, I don't think we can deny they've got themselves in an enviable position, right? So yep. where do you go from here? We're, we're going to find out. I, I just wish the quarterback situation, Oof. uh, was not what it is. Reg, let's give some love to miles Garrett who showed up big yeah. again today, right? Right out of the gate should have been a safety on the first play from scrimmage, right? Yep. Yes. Stefanski didn't challenge quick enough or the official didn't see it, uh, you know, quick enough. Uh, Garrett had the, you know, what the, should have been a sack and a safety, but he had two more sacks. He's up to 13, leading the NFL, I think, in sacks, front runner for defensive player of the year on the best defense in the NFL. So mm-hmm. kudos to Miles Garrett for continuing to to make him not just plays in blowouts or in the middle of the game, right, Reg? Yeah. Uh, when, when it matters. And yes. so that, well, that's, that's the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Denzel Ward played well today, too. I thought um, uh, had, had some good coverage on Pickens as well as a big hit late in the game and everything. So, uh, you know, kudos to him and, and kudos to Jimmy Donovan uh, for coming back, uh, you know, after battling, uh, you know, leukemia for the second time and uh, getting back in the broadcast booth. I saw Kevin Stefanski gave him a game ball in the locker room afterwards. That's cool. Uh, yeah, so it's very yeah, cool. Very cool by Kevin Stefanski to do that. So, hey, it wasn't pretty. It was uh, at times downright fugly. And you know what fugly stands mm-hmm. for. I'll leave it at that. But, hey, they'll take it. They're 7-3, and three, best start since 94. And now it's, uh, as they say, uh, on to the next one, and that's at Denver next week. Uh, four oh five start and the Broncos. Hey, watching them right now. Yeah, well, as we as we uh, record, our, What's the, what do you got uh, now? R&R. What's the score? Uh, ten six mini mini. Okay, uh, and, and this is a, a late second, right before halftime. All right, and Denver's played well as of late uh, with yeah, wins over who? Russell Kansas Wilson. City and Buffalo. I think that's right. right. So Russell Wilson started to play better the last few weeks. Yeah, so it's not going to be easy next week. But uh, we'll, you know, we'll see if uh, Flacco's the starter on Sunday at Denver, <laughs> or if they go with DTR or uh, some. Reg, this game today, I looked it up. This brought back memories of the Brown Steelers matchup in 2000. You ready for this memory? A blast okay. from the past. Go ahead. In 2000, the Browns played the Steelers. The quarterbacks that played two for each team in that game were these quarterbacks. Cordell Stewart and Kent Graham, Mm. Doug Peterson and Spurgeon Wynn. Those were the four quarterbacks who played in that game. It was a 22-0 win by the Steelers. But those four quarterbacks combined for 173 (laughs) yards passing (laughs) in that game. (laughs) That's what today yeah. reminded me of, Reg. I did the math. Give yeah. these guys credit today. DTR and Pickett threw for a combined 271. So uh, 100 more than those four did back <laughs> in 2000. But that's not saying much. That's not well, setting no. the bar real high. It's not setting the bar real high. And that's <laughs> almost you think about that. An NFL game, that little passing yardage oh. by quarterbacks is uh, Hard to imagine, isn't it? Almost oh. incomprehensible in the, in this league, but uh, yeah. I think, so I, I think Chris Fuamatu Maafala might have scored the game's only touchdown back in 2000. I'm not sure. Okay. I, it was either him or Bettis, one of the two back okay. in, in that day. Okay. So. It could have been yeah. the bus. Yeah. But so, yeah, that, that, but yeah. that's and what epic. today looked like, man. In Bronx oh, boy. history, right? And it, epic. it was, uh, it was, whew, it was darn, just ugly today uh, <laughs> at times. But hey, they got the way. Hey, Kevin Stefanski, all he's. I, we, we got did. the win, fellas. Seven and three. Now let's see what it takes to win next week at Denver. And uh, stay tuned to, to the Kenny and JT show throughout the week at WHBC to see if we we spot any other quarterbacks flying into Cleveland at uh, uh, you know Hopkins Airport for tryouts. If Flacco doesn't uh, you know work out well with a day of practice or something, right? Yeah, exactly right. Because th- that very well could happen.
Yes. I, I, I would, I'd expect another quarterback to be brought in. Maybe, maybe not necessarily to, you know, to, to start. I think, don't you think the plan is if he's, uh, if he looks even halfway decent that Flacco is going to be the guy? Yes, yeah. absolutely. I do now, too. He's already here. So yeah. he, he's had a jump start on everything like that. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, I, I think he'll be active for next week's game. Uh, or I do too. Browns. Yep. For sure. So we'll, we'll see how that plays. Hey, Congratulations. I know we're talking, but hey, we're just being realistic. Seven and three, best start since 94. Kudos to Stefanski. DTR completed four passes on that final drive, along with a penalty to help set up. How about Dustin Hopkins with game winning field goals in back to back weeks to beat the Ravens and the Steelers? He's a machine, man. Uh, There's one that might be Andrew Berry's best move, quite honestly. 26. uh, You just got to get rid of Cade York. That might be the best move the man's made. 26 of 29 on field goal attempts. Uh, that's, that, uh, the guy is, uh, you know, he's a field goal kicking machine, and you you just have all kinds of confidence in him uh, when, you know, and you could tell, I mean, with, again, with Thompson Robinson today, you knew the Browns, uh, they aren't going to try to do too much and put the football in the end zone on that last drive, right? It's all about right. get the man in field goal position so that he can go send us to the locker room with a W and hopefully the Rook QB doesn't do anything stupid before that. Yeah, I, I called my son uh, in, in Portugal before the game. I said, uh, first team to 10 wins today, son. <laughs> he <laughs> laughed you... at me. What are you talking yeah, about, Dad? Yeah, yeah, well. I called him after the game. He said, no, you weren't too far off. I said, hey, Browns were the first team to 10. They won 13 to 10. But, yeah, so uh, if you bet the under today, <laughs> congratulations. You were a smart, uh, smart better today. Tell so, Cameron uh, Rhoda, his, his buddy Red said, you start listening to dad's wisdom. Hey, he has it for 31 years. Why start now, right? <laughs> Just I, I, kidding, I feel son. You, love you. I feel uh, you. Love you to death, son. Uh, of both course. of us are going to have uh, graduates from the Ohio. How about yes. that segue? From the Ohio State University. It's so, crazy, isn't it? Why don't we, when we come back, Rich, I believe this will be the 118th meeting between the Ohio State Buckeyes and the winningest team in college football history with their 1,000th win yesterday, the Michigan Wolverines. Uh, Let's dive into that uh, matchup where it'll be two versus three, and the winner goes on to play Iowa in the Big Ten championship game, which means the winner of this game on Saturday will be in in the uh, college football playoff. That's how big this game will be at Ann Arbor yeah. on Saturday. Michael and I will preview that with you when we return here to the r r podcast. Close your ears, Kirk Ferentz. <laughs> Powered by MGM Northfield Park on the Press Play Podcast Network. What's up, everyone? I'm Holly Wetzel. And I'm Tigers Powell. And we are your hosts of the Orange is Oranger, a Cleveland Browns podcast on the Press Play Podcast Network. We give you all the dog pound coverage that you'll need to get you through the regular season, hopeful postseason, and I'd say off-season, Tyvis, but is there really ever an off-season for this team? Thankfully for our podcast, Holly, there really never is when it comes to the Cleveland Browns. Don't miss our breakdown of each week's matchup, game recaps, and any and all news out of Berea to feed your Browns appetite. As we know, Holly, dogs gotta eat. Yes, they do. So hit that subscribe button and never miss an episode of the Orange is Orange, Cleveland Browns podcast on the Press Play Podcast Network. Hey, everybody, it's Sam Amico from Cavs on the Break NBA podcast. Be sure to give us a listen for all your Cleveland Cavaliers recaps, analysis, breakdowns, draft talk, free agency. The list goes on and on. Give us a listen. Cavs on the Break NBA podcast. Hey, the Roadman, Kenny Rhoda here from the Red Guy and Rhoda podcast. And a shout out to MGM Northfield Park, our title sponsor. Love that they're on board with another year of R&R. And by the way, in case you don't know this, shame on you if you don't. But uh, Northfield Park, they're your home for live and simulcast racing. Catch the excitement of that live harness racing every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday evening with a 6 p.m. post time wager and win daily on top thoroughbreds and harness tracks from around the world with action starting right around noon. Free admission, free parking every day at Northfield Park and tell them Reg Iron Road Ascension. Looking for new insights on the Cleveland sports scene with a unique side of Cleveland sports history? Then you found the perfect podcast. 
I'm John Siegel. And I'm Scott Sable, and we're hosts of the Sable Brothers on the Baseline podcast, a podcast about Cleveland sports, but not your typical podcast about the land's sports teams. Join us as we embark on a journey of sharing a unique and historical side of Cleveland sports history with the help of some former Cleveland sports stars and other historical figures. All right here on the Sable Brothers on the Baseline podcast, part of the Press Play Podcast Network. And we continue with the Reg Iron Road, a podcast here on the Press Play Podcast Network, powered by MGM Northfield Park. And Reg, before we get into that 118th meeting between Ohio State and Michigan uh, this coming Saturday, uh, we have one Flacco fact of <laughs> yeah. the day uh, <laughs> yeah. that you were able to conjure up here uh, while we were uh, you know, in the little break uh, that we take here as we're taping this podcast. Share with our listeners the fact of the day involving Joe Flacco and why it might might not be a bad thing to have him take over at quarterback for the Browns. Joe Flacco yeah. has won nine football games as a starter in Cleveland Brown Stadium. <laughs> Eight from his 11 years as a Balmer Raven. Yeah. And the other one, Kenny, was in week two last year, right? He's quarterback in the New York Jets and <laughs> – was looking terrible, and the Browns had the lead. And then, of course, the uh, the Jets came back behind Flacco in the last couple of minutes to win that game last year. So he started 11 games in Brown Stadium, and he's won <laughs> nine of them. Nine and two. Nine and two. Does Ooh, that make boy. you feel any better? No, he's still old. He's a statue, <laughs> and he stinks. He's three and seventeen, and he should be or three and fourteen in his last seventeen games. He should be two and fifteen if the Browns recover <laughs> an onside right. kick last year, right? There you go. So yeah, there that, you go. Maybe some people out there, if you're into the numerology thing, you might like that. So uh, we'll, we'll see. Hey, it, uh, one I, more quick factoid because oh, this is another it. one that I, I and it. I said, now this it, no, really, this can't be right. So the Browns. Came back in the league right in 1999. Yeah, this this year with using Dorian Thompson Robinson today, following Deshaun Watson and uh, PJ Walker. Yeah, this is now the tenth time since '99 that they've <laughs> used three starting quarterbacks in the same football season. Oh and Kenny, I mean, come on now, it's. You know, either that you just got atrocious luck with your quarterbacks, or I don't know. You I have atrocious you, quarterbacks. That's my that that, that has yeah. something to do with it, right? Or you have bad quarterbacks that you have to continue to uh, pull uh, pull out of games because they're not producing. But yeah, ten times three wow. quarterbacks in a season. There you go. It's ten times in twenty four years. Yes, sir. 1999 to 23. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so, well, let, let's so hope there's our, the last uh, season our two big happens. factoids, Joe yeah. Flacco and the Browns quarterbacking situation. Yeah. Let, let, um, let that marinate for a while as you think about uh, next week's <laughs> okay. game at, at Denver. But okay. before the Browns play at Denver, Reg, on Sunday, the Buckeyes and the Wolverines will play for the 118th time in Ann Arbor. For the right, like I said, uh, going into break, I think for the right to be one of the four teams in the college football playoff, because whoever wins will beat Iowa uh, in the Big Ten championship game. And uh, both teams are undefeated, 11-0. and 0. Uh, Buckeyes were ranked second in the last playoff committee rankings, Michigan third. Today, they flip-flopped in the AP and coaches poll. They dropped Michigan to three and moved Ohio State up to two in both of those. So it's two versus three right now. Uh, Reg, your thoughts on these two teams as they square off for the 118th time on Saturday? Yeah, I, I think, uh, again, it's uh, it's going to come down to the defensive side of the football. I, I think uh, whomever can uh, flex their muscle defensively a little bit better in the last, uh, for, you know, for many years, uh, that was Ohio State. The last two years, that's been Michigan. So, um, Kenny, look, I, I, you know, you know, we've talked about this a lot. My thing with, uh, I, well, we're just talking about, you know, quarterbacks and what have you. Uh, I don't know if Ryan Day's got a little bit of a Michigan problem. I think we're going to find out. 
this week. There's a whole bunch of stuff swirling around, but uh, I think Ryan Day is a hell of a good football coach, right? And uh, I, but you know, I know they're. I've heard, I've talked to a lot of Buckeyes. Ah, if he, if he loses three in a row to Michigan, and if it gets out of hand like it has the last couple of years, he's got to go. he got to get rid of him or he's going to turn into John Cooper. Right. Well, you tell me, do you think that's, uh, again, if, if we go on that assumption, Michigan wins, that's three straight losses for day. He's then right. one and three against Michigan. John Cooper went two and ten. Ohio State would never let that go that far again, would they? Like they did with Cooper? No, not not in this day and age. No, what have you done for me lately? Yeah, all those other wins are great, uh, but uh, if you can't win the last two games uh, of the uh, you know season, which is Michigan in the Big Ten championship game to put you in the playoff, then uh, there's a problem. Now, last year they lost, uh, but still got in. Should have beat Georgia, missed the field goal. Georgia goes on to win the national championship. I think the way they played against Georgia took some of the pressure off uh, of Day coming into this year. And then you add in that Jim Harbaugh has been suspended now twice uh, in one season for two separate reasons, and he will not coach in this game. Could you imagine if Ryan Day goes in there and gets blown out when Harbaugh's not coaching? You talk yeah. about holding someone's feet to the fire, right, and turning up, uh, you know, the the temperature on that hot seat. Um, you know, the the Buckeyes. Uh, this this is a chance for them for redemption because. Uh, I'm a believer where there's smoke, there's fire. So I, I think there's something to the the sign stealing scandal. You don't fire two coaches uh, unless there is. And Harbaugh and everybody from Michigan was ready to go in Friday and uh, challenge the Big Ten. And then they got some more information as to the uh, you know uh, factoids that uh, the Big Ten had, and they all backed off and just accepted. Uh, the three-game suspension for Harbaugh, and uh, the Big Ten said, okay, we'll back off and leave it up to the NCAA. So there's something to it. Let's see if there was more to it, right, Uh, which helped Michigan win these last two games by a large margin. Um, If the outcome's one-sided in Ohio State's way, you go, okay, maybe there was. If Michigan goes in there and kicks the crap out of the Buckeyes again without Harbaugh, and, uh, you know, uh, not using uh, the alleged sign stealing, then there was nothing to it, and you can't say a damn thing if you're a Buckeye fan. Yeah, well, I I, I do think there's uh, – and we're going to find out how he handles it. I think it's it's kind of split. A lot of people, and I'm talking about Ohio State fans, think he'll – Ryan Day I'm talking about. All the pressure's on him, though. Yeah. All the pressure's on him. In Absolutely. Ohio State. Um, so um, – we're going to find out, uh, you know, what they're all about. And uh, the best thing for them will be what they have not been able to do the last two years. And that is to, uh, you know, put a stop to Michigan's run game. Because Michigan has absolutely just beat them down physically, um, have put 87 points on the board in the last two games, 44, is it 42? Two to 42 to 28 two years ago in Ann Arbor and 45 to 23 last year. Okay. So they've, uh, you know, again, that's 87 points in the last two games, and the majority of it has come on the ground game. So, uh, you know, and again, I, you know, so now the defensive coordinator changed up a lot of things, and, uh, you got uh, you got different players that have done a good job this year, and but we're you know but as we said, we're going to find out if if that holds true in, in uh, Michigan Stadium come Saturday. They they've they've done a better job this year. Ohio State has, but Kenny, if you go back and look at it, we were saying the same things last year, right? They were they were the favorite last year at home. Um, I think most Buckeye fans, and I know fans are fans, but thought, oh, they, you know, that'll never happen again with what happened in 2021, right? And I'm talking about, you know, Michigan dominating that game. It was worse last year. The I'm Michigan looking. physicality yeah. and the ground game was was more uh, uh, prolific than it was in the 2021 game. Yeah, 530 yards last year for Michigan. Now 492 for the Buckeyes. They just didn't. They settled for field goals. They didn't score touchdowns. Well, that's so right. The yards were close, you know. But the yeah, Buckeyes yeah. had uh, two turnovers, 
And, and we're going to find out, Reg, you know, this sign, I, like I said, I think there's something to it. I think if you know what's coming, uh, you have a better chance of stopping the play, just like uh, the Houston Astros. They, hey, if you know it's a curveball, you got a better chance of hitting a curveball. Well, if you know it's a run play, all your players can sell out. They don't have to worry about the pass. Or if you know it's a pass play, then you're you're going to drop into your coverage, knowing you don't have to respect the run whatsoever. So uh, let let's see if, if indeed. Uh, this game is a lot closer or lopsided, you know, the other way, because prior to the last two years, when the sign stealing uh, events went on, the Buckeyes had beat Michigan eight years in a row and Harbaugh didn't play them in the, the COVID year. And now all of a sudden they flipped the script the last two years. And I think that's why a lot of people are saying, okay, uh, where there's smoke, there's fire. There's something to this. You don't go from losing eight straight or whatever it was and zero and five, if you're Harbaugh to winning that convincingly without some help. Only thing I'll tell you that I don't like about that, yeah, yeah, that makes it sound like Michigan is Purdue or Illinois. And by that, I mean, um, you can go look at all you want, but I'll go back to Harbaugh's wins here, you know, at Michigan, 10, 10, 9, 9. So look, Kenny, it's not like, uh, don't make off like Michigan's been some of the lo- uh, little sister of the poor, like I said, and has been. Illinois or Purdue or Northwestern, they've had under Harbaugh very good teams. Every year he had won a but almost all 10 win seasons in a 12 win right regular season, right? And then a bowl game or nine win season. So um, you know, he certainly got that the got it headed in the right direction going back to when he got here. Here's my thing to you. I'm gonna ask you a question. I can know again. So I, let, let's assume I know I got your signs. I'm a linebacker, let's say, or safety. I, I would have. I'm think this is a run, and I know this is a run to the uh, the left side, right? Now there's always what there's when you're playing those positions, though. You still have to do what I can know where it's going to be. But, Kenny, don't I have to still get off blocks? And what if you put me on my ass? What if you come to block me as an old lineman and put me on my ass? What good does that do me if I think I know where the where the uh, the play's been called to? Well, if you're a defensive player, and let's say you're a corner or a safety, you don't have to worry about the ball being thrown. You can help your linebacker. He may get blocked, but then you're there in run support to uh, you know pick up the slack. Usually it's the D line, right? They're supposed to eat up the O line and let the linebackers make the play. Well, in Usually. this case, uh, you know, if that's uh, you know the, the the situation, if they know that, then the linebackers can even get blocked. Then you've got your safeties coming up for run support because they don't have to worry about it going over the top. Or on the flip side, if you know it's a pass, then guess what? You're not going to blitz. Uh, you're going to drop as a safety, and you're going to stay home with, with uh, you know, the chance of them trying to go over the top, and you know that's the play uh, you know, coming at you. So I just think it's an unfair advantage. Um, and, and don't get me wrong. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. That's what Al Bubba Baker told me many years ago, okay? Everybody's trying to gain an advantage. But from – the information that's being presented, they went about it in an illegal way to obtain information. And there is a paper trail as long as there can be uh, with Connor Stallions and uh, uh, now Central Michigan, him being on the sidelines there with somebody and uh, the linebacker coach that got fired and then Uncle T, whoever the hell is, uh, paying for all these trips and everything like that. I just think where, like I said, where there's smoke, there's fire. And I can't see Jim Harbaugh surviving this either. A, he leaves like Pete Carroll did to avoid anything. Or B, Michigan finally says after the end of the regular season, whether they win the title or they don't, uh, Jim, thanks. That's enough. Uh, why don't you head to the NFL? Yeah, I uh, I got to tell you, I think uh, you said it a little bit. Or, well, we were saying it, uh, you know, before we started. I think all the pressure in this one is on Ryan Day and Ohio State. Oh, I yeah. think with all this going on, yep, uh, they're expected to win now. 
And what worries me, Reg, is I'm not sold yet on Kyle McCord still. Okay. Now, uh, he's played better as of late, and he's got Marvin Harrison, who I think is the best player in college football, and it's not even close. All right. Uh, but you got to get him the football. And there have been times this year where he's missed him. Um, and, and in a game like this, you can't miss him because big plays don't happen, uh, you know, as frequently against uh, a Michigan defense as they do against a Maryland or a Rutgers or a Minnesota. So when it's there, you can't miss. Uh, but I do think the Buckeyes uh, have a better chance with the running game that they now have with Trevion Henderson. Uh, he's played very well he, the last few weeks, yeah. When he's good. played, he's been the second best player on the field for the Buckeyes behind Marvin Harrison. Mm -hmm. He's been hurt, though. You know, he, he's kind of like David Justice when he's out there, right? Justice mm -hmm. hit the home run off uh, the late Jim Poole to win the, you know, World Series for the Braves that year. But when he was with, uh, what was he? He had a sprained neck. I remember Greg Brenda just ripping him to shreds because he had a sprain. He slept wrong on his <laughs> neck or whatever, David Justice, right? So uh, he couldn't stay healthy. Well, that's been Henderson's situation in and out of the lineup. Well, so far, as far as, you know, what is this, on a Sunday night, he supposedly is healthy going into this game. So that'll he makes an average offensive line from Ohio State better because he doesn't need as much space or room, uh, you know, to, to get through it but they better do a, a solid job against this Michigan defensive line or it won't matter if it's Henderson or not back there. Well, having Henderson, of course, is uh, a, uh, a big plus factor for Ohio State. Um, there's no doubt about that. And uh, so if they can run the football effectively well, I agree with you, too, about Kyle McCord. Um, you know, I I got to see it first uh, in yep. a big game and a big atmosphere like this. Um, no, I'm not. Uh, he's he's played he's played well. He's played uh, decently to well in spurts th throughout the course of the year. But again, now uh, you know you're you're talking about uh, um, you know one of the best defenses. Certainly been top five by uh, by all the numbers in college yep. football. So. Yep. You know, we're 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 going to find out. We're going to find out a lot of things uh, about uh, about both these football teams. And uh, you know, I, people ask me, well, without without Harbaugh there, you know, could that be an issue? See, everybody says no. I think yes, a little bit. To be honest with you, I really do. And I think it's uh, you can say, well, but he's still practicing and what have you. But um, yeah, game day is different now game day is is different and uh you know so i think that that's a, a little bit of a factor that uh again to me kind of adds to the price if you're being honest about it and i know you know 99.9 percent .9 of you are buckeye fans but if you're being honest about it to me all of that you know that adds to this pressure that's going to be on ryan day in ohio state sure. i mean again you can say well uh, yeah, it can't be losses like it was the last two years. Well, sure, that's a given. You'd hope they wouldn't get beat by three touchdowns like they have the last two years. But, um, again, uh, they got to win the football game. I mean, Ohio State, you just, you, you got to win the football game. I mean, is anybody going to feel good about a close loss and nope. say, what? Uh, well, at least it was better than the last two years? <laughs> well, that ain't no. going to fly with me. No, I don't. I don't think that's the case. So, um, I do believe there's a lot of pressure on uh, on Ryan Day in Ohio State, and I do think though it does help them a little bit that Jim Harbaugh is not standing there 52 yards away across the field from him. Um, you know, and that that to me that hurts Michigan a little bit. So, you know, we'll see how it all plays out. But uh, you know, again, I I, I just hope. Uh, hell, the last. I know that was it 18 or 19 when Ohio State put up 56 on Michigan. The final was 56 to 31. And then the two, the last two years, we've mentioned that Michigan has won by uh, by two touchdowns and three touchdowns, and it wasn't even a game in the fourth quarter. So I I don't know. I, I just I don't expect that to happen again, these type of uh one-sided uh definitive losses for either team this year. The odds makers right now, Michael Bregg, I have Michigan listed as a four-point favorite 
Well, that's about right. Saturday's game. Yeah, it's over, probably about right. Over under 47 and a half is mm. uh, the number. And uh, as of today, 39 degrees, partly sunny skies uh, supposed to happen there in uh, Ann Arbor uh, for the 12 o'clock kickoff in the 118th meeting between Ohio State and Michigan. This I do know, like I said, whoever wins that game will represent the Big Ten, uh, in my opinion, in the college football playoff as one of the four teams trying to win a national championship. So uh, that's what's at stake. I know you well, still have to beat Iowa, and they've got yeah. a good defense, but if you think the Browns' offense is challenged, go watch <laughs> Iowa's offense. Yeah, Kirk Ferentz. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and the sad thing is, I think um, uh, to me in a, uh, uh, and again, I know I, I always say I'm going to be, you know, Big Ten biased, uh, you know, and uh, always want to see the best for the Big Ten. But, you know, I really think that there's a case this year um, in a, uh, say, given a tight football game, I mean, think of it, Kenny. The loser is going to be eleven and one, right? And uh, but but then again, their season's over, so they the loser will not play in the Big Ten championship game. But I don't know. You can't tell me that either one of them aren't one of the uh, one one of the top four teams in the country. I'm sorry, I uh, I'd fight that all along. However, it's not going to happen this year. Um, it because. Especially if if Michigan loses, I, I think you know probably they're going to be glad that uh, until the whatever bowl game they go in, that uh, you know the the NCA won't have to deal with them anymore. And Kenny, to be honest with you, if it's Ohio State that loses, even if it's a close game, you know what I'm going to I'm going to think that people go, well, you used up your mulligan last year. We put you in last year after you got beat by three touchdowns at home by Michigan. And Kenny, now just think that you remember how around the country now, not yeah. here, of course, but around the country, there were many, many uh, upset people that Ohio State got that berth after losing by three touchdowns and at home and then still got one of the top four berths. So, you know, again, I, I, I was very surprised that it happened. I don't think that's going to happen this year for the loser. In fact, I, I would uh, uh, I would the, pretty much say it won't. Reg, the only way that happens, right, is if you have upsets. In yes, the well, pack, you, you're right. Yeah, the you're right. Pack twelve and the the Big Twelve, you know, and and the 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 yeah. undefeated teams that were supposed to win don't win, and they get beat by a lesser ranked team. That's True. the only way Ohio True. State or Michigan, as a loser, would have a chance of getting you know, sneaking in the back door again. Yeah, That's the I, only chance, right? Right, right. And um, I, I just, I don't see it happening. Now, yeah, again, maybe. you're right. If, if you know, if uh, you get uh, who uh, Florida State loses and uh, Washington, Washington loses those two specifically, yeah. um, maybe, because that'd be, uh, well, wait a minute. No, Washington's undefeated as well, aren't they? Yes. The five undefeateds are Georgia, Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, Florida State, and Washington. Yeah, so if Florida State loses, Washington loses, right? Oregon beats Washington. I think that would be the rematch in the Pac-12 uh, game, right? Right. Oregon yep. might go with Bo Nix putting up Heisman. Well, like yeah, numbers. as a one-loss team, yeah, right? Because one they've already, team, right? yeah, 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 yeah. But if Florida State loses, no. right? And they and, lost their quarterback, so right. they, it, it shouldn't be held against them, but it will be. Right. They'll never admit that. Yeah. But, you know, if they get beat. And it comes down to how bad you get beat, too. Not That'll true. play into it. As the, do you get your door? Ohio State gets their doors blown off again for the third year in a row. Yeah, that that's not going to sit well with the committee. And they'll say, no, nope, not, not, you know, we're not giving them the, the benefit of the doubt. We'll go with somebody who lost a closer game that's a one-loss team mm. uh, and go from there. But, hey, the way you avoid that if you're Ohio State or Michigan is just win the well, game yeah, and you well, don't have you to worry win. about anybody else. No, that's true. And like I said, it, it's 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 tough this year. Again, I'll, I'll say again, I might be a little biased, but you can't tell me just from a playing perspective inside uh, that football field that those two aren't two of the best four teams in the country. They are. And I don't think, uh, you know, that uh, – there's any doubt about that, but I would be shocked if both of them got in this year, like All they right. did last year. Fair enough. How, how about we yeah. end it this way, Reg? 
if Ohio State gets blown out again by Michigan, Urban Meyer returns to coach the Buckeyes the following year. How about that? How about we leave? We we close this R and R podcast, wow. and we'll see what happens up in Ann Arbor on Saturday if they get blown out again. Because I heard I heard this from Herb today. All right, it was on social media. Here's what he said. He said, you know, getting ready for for uh, you know Michigan. Uh, he he said um, no hitting in practice when I was to coach there at Ohio State during Michigan week, because the mm-hmm. next player you hit is going to be wearing maize and blue. Mm-hmm. And that was yep. just the mental mindset that he started to plant in their heads, right? He goes 7-0, and never loses uh, to, to that team up north, and little things like that. He was a psychology major, uh, you know, in college, and he used it as part of his coaching style. But uh, it's just those little things. I don't know if Ryan Day has that, right? Us against the world, he picked on Lou Holtz. Suffering, <laughs> succotash, yeah. whatever. Uh, that yeah. was funny for yeah. a little bit, yeah. but uh, yeah. uh, we'll we'll see what. But I'm just planting that seed out there right now, Reg. All right, just throwing okay. it out there. Her, herbs. Boy, up. that's gonna. I got all my Sparty buddies telling me that uh, Urban's going to be the next coach in East Lansing, oh, in Michigan State. And I, I've told them all, hey, no way in hell he's going to go into yeah. into that uh, that mess that they got going on up there. Does he's going to look and say, yeah, yeah, I'm, I, but I'm, I don't have enough talent on this roster. So yeah, I don't, I don't see that happening. Don't see him going there. So you're thinking he'd go back for round two in Columbus, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. And they'd welcome him back with open arms. That, well, that's just sure they would thinking out loud, you know, so we'll see. Um, Ryan Day better win that game so he doesn't have to uh, have to even think about that or who might replace well, him. If you're going to hear a lot of – right, because, you like I said, I think I said earlier, you're going to hear a lot. If he loses that one, you're going to start hearing a lot of John Cooper comparisons. Yes, you are. Hell of a good football coach. There's no question about that. Yeah. Hell of a good football coach. So is John Cooper. Yeah. Damn good coach. Two and ten against Michigan. You know, you can don't forget you, you the know, tie. State coach, the tie. That's right. Two ten and one. Gordon Gee said it's the greatest Gordon, tie greatest, ever. Two ten and one. <laughs> no, he called it a great win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, but um, well, that's what makes college football. All yeah. of this stuff makes college football the best. It does, Reg. All right, this was fun. We'll do it again uh, uh, next week after the Browns. And Joe Flacco, possibly, and uh, the Broncos. And then Ohio State, Michigan. Uh, we'll break it all down as we always do here on the RR podcast, Reg. Yes, sir, man. Look forward to it, Kenny. Have a good week, man. All right. Thanks to all of our uh, listeners out there. Your loyalty over the years does not go unnoticed. We appreciate it more uh, than you know. I was just telling Reg not too long ago, we hit 40,000 downloads. Uh, for two old uh, men uh, doing a podcast and trying to climb, uh, you know, the world of uh, what the technology is these days. Not bad for two old guys, Reg. Not bad is right. Well, so we'll uh, we will kind of take the uh, the Atta boys for that. But greatly appreciate uh, all of you who have uh, really uh, taken to our podcast and uh, listen each and every week. Greatly appreciative and can't thank you enough for that. Yeah, thank you, Ty Courts, for putting up with these two old guys. And uh, Chase uh, at Press Play Podcast Network, thank you for having us on board. Have a great week, everybody. We'll talk to you next time.